what else did you think was wrong or not PC about that character? There was quite a few things. <laughs> it was just, you know, there was just a lot of st stereotypes. I mean, it wasn't as bad as some things, but... Uh, What's that thing yeah. he says to her when she first meets? She goes, how are you doing, hot stuff? Like, he hangs upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess you know. At the same time, he's meant to be quite an endearing character as well. Yeah, he's, he's not, not malicious, not entirely, is he? Yeah, he's not entirely negative. Written. It's just you know, just this, just some stereotyping in it. Yeah, yeah, that was. And then also, you got the grandparents who are feeling her up in a way. It's <laughs> so, like you've grown. Like his, yeah. her grandmother is like, you've grown so much. Look, you got boobies, and she touches her boobs, and she's like. I can't believe my grandmother yeah. just grabbed my boobs. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that's another awkward one. Yeah, that would have worked. That now, no. um, but the the one everyone seems to pick up that the most kind of PC thing now that people seem to pick up on is one, the uh, long duck toe. <laughs> Sorry, I just I just think that's a terrible name to call the character um, because of what we've just spoken about. Is yeah. Do you know there's that scene when he has his girlfriend from college who he can't stand um, and she's drunk yeah. in the car and he's meant to dri drive her home and she's completely drunk and then there's the Anthony Michael Hall character who's desperate to have sex and loses virginity yeah. so he says oh you yeah. can drive her home you can have sex with her like that's rape basically <laughs> and you see well it's just so that you know, there was a lot of films that had sequences similar. Yeah, and everybody's funny because you see, like, there was yeah. a reaction of people watching it on YouTube, like, from the Now era, and they're all lawyers, and you had lawyers watching it as well, going, yeah, yeah that's that's rape. <laughs> but then... They were quite blasé about those kind of things back then. It yeah. Just, what it were you going to say be about that? It was just meant to be a, a silly joke. But yeah. It's just one thing that... You have to be a bit more sensitive about these days. Yeah. I mean, what were you going to say that that seemed to happen quite a lot in films? Can you give some examples and, like, why? Uh, one recent example they've talked about is it was one of the James Bond films where, you know, basically there's this one of the Bond girls is saying, oh, no, no, I don't want to. And then Bond is quite insistent, shall yeah. we say. What Bond was it? Saying how, uh, I mean, honestly, it could have been anything, like Honoré and Moore era. Yeah, it's yeah, quite, yeah. You know what I mean? But there was one in particular where he's sort of threatening to, I think, you know, because she's giving him some information or something and he's threatening to, you know, let, let it be known that she did that. Yeah. So he's, he's almost making it that she has no choice but to sleep with him. Oh, I see. But, you know, obviously, you know, James Bond, that's why we have so many discussions now about, you know, is James Bond too much of a dinosaur to be to carry on in this well that's this it isn't age. it when he came along daniel craig he was like saying well i think it was part of the press conference when they first announced him as james bond and yeah. and everyone thought oh my god that's a terrible mistake like why would you cast him as he'd be a terrible bond and then he ended up being one of the best ones apparently i mean i never got into the bond franchise but he um yeah and they were talking about how they kind of tried to sort of get with the times and you know how they view women yeah. and stuff but it is interesting and they sort of they kind of did but then you know even still with some of daniel craig's films there was some problem you know some scenes that people now find problematic oh really uh but i think you know people take sometimes just take movies too seriously yeah you know, in the end, some of these are just escapism, and they're not meant to represent reality. No, and they just I mean, James Bond doesn't really represent reality at all. No, it's pure fantasy, isn't yeah. it? An escapism, yeah. like you said. It's it's no harm intended, but it's just people, yeah, being too political. But that was yeah. one of the main things that stood out in that film, um, uh, Sixteen Candles. I did find it very sweet, though, that at the end. You know, they finally realise they've all forgotten her birthday. So that's another terrible set of parents. <laughs> terrible set of parents. They've yeah. forgotten her birthday. And uh, who, you know, her brother, uh, David. Uh, yeah. He appeared in some film. I can't remember what it was. Was it A Flight of the Navigator? 
Or was that another kid? No, that was another kid. He uh, definitely appeared in another film. In quite a few I films of that era. Yeah. The young Justin annoying Henry. brother. Yeah. And then she has the older it sister spell, who's, yeah. who's uh, completely drunk on a wedding day. Oh, he was in Kramer versus Kramer. Oh, was he? Was he that he li- the little boy? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. That's another good film. I think that might be it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I know. Is there anything you want to bring up about 16 Candles? There's just stuff like that. I mean, it's quite interesting to realise that now there's a lot of yeah. things you can see that actually aren't so PC about it when you watch it now. Whereas when you were then, especially that situation I just told you about where yeah. he's like, oh, it's all right, you can sleep with her. She's drunk. She's out of it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think you know sometimes you know when you look at films like this, it's quite an interesting time capsule. But that's it; is so that it reflects the time and how people of, thought yeah, and appreciate you know how far we've come since. Yeah, then. yeah. Which is I don't think there's any point you know looking back at a thirty-six-year-old film or whatever it is, and then being you know completely offended. No, you know, this can't do much about you know erasing it from history. No. So I think, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a time capsule moment and we can appreciate that, you know, nowadays that, you know, those things wouldn't be, wouldn't be made but then, um, in the same way. That's very much what art's about and filmmaking's really yeah. just like that. I mean, there's lots of artists who were controversial back in their day. Um, Picasso was one of them um, and yeah. uh, Dali. So, and it's only... Well they're, well, they're kind of the opposite because it's only whereas many years later and well after they passed away that they've become more appreciated for what they've done. Um, but at the time, they were very controversial. Like, nobody wanted to know of their work. Do you know what I mean? It was so sh- yeah. shocking. So, so yeah, it is really interesting how that happens, <laughs> over especially <laughs> the 80s. But... Is there anything you want to say about Pretty Pink? Um, not Pretty Pink. Uh, what you can say about Pretty Pink or Sixteen Candles, because you haven't had much uh, of a say about them. No, that's okay. So yeah, I mean those are two that I enjoyed. They're not two of my favourite no. John Hughes films. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe because the protagonist is you know a teenage girl, so it didn't. I didn't relate to it quite as much when I was younger. Yeah. But yeah, I've always, I've always enjoyed you know the the quirky characters and the soundtracks, and you know, and some of the costuming as well. Yeah, yeah the costumes so were amazing. And you know, at the end of that film, the uh, Sixteen Candles, when she goes yeah. out after her sister's wedding, and she kind of hopes that Jake's going to turn up, and he doesn't. And then behind their father's car, her father's car. Um, he turns up, and I was kind of in the back of my head. I was going, "Oh, come on, that would never happen." <laughs> you'd just be miserable, and you'd have to go to yeah. the bloody reception all by yourself. <laughs> so yeah, but that's. Um, but at the same time, as a teenage girl, you can kind of see that that would be like you know the most romantic thing ever if he really turns up, the most handsome boy in the school, etc. Um, yeah, that was that kind of uh, yeah idealistic romantic comedy moment. Wasn't yeah, it? but yeah. really in real life, he would have gone off to college and then split up with her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, is there anything you want to say, Tom, about any films that I've missed out on? I mean, if I had like a top three, I'd reckon it would be uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles as number three, Ferris Bueller as number two, and The Breakfast Club number one. But what would yours be yeah. if you could put them in? Oh, that's tough. It is I hard. think I'd probably have the same top three. Yeah. Then again, maybe for nostalgia, um, Home Alone would be in there somewhere. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? I'll have to sort of squeeze it. In. I'll, I'll just squeeze it in as a top four. I'll cheat. <laughs> um, is uh, there one any other films... film I did quite enjoy it was Weird Science. Oh, was did that his? That one? I never saw yeah, that. that. Was a, yeah, so that had uh, Anthony Michael Hall again. Okay. But I just remember seeing that as a young kid. And it's just the idea of, because do you know the story? So basically these two geeks accidentally find a way to make their ideal woman. Yeah, the, so, the hottest woman. Yeah, <laughs> computer. yeah. So, yeah, they're these two, you know, they're like sort of loser geeks. They can't get a girlfriend. So they create one. <laughs> And it's, you know, like a supermodel. Uh, 
And, oh, I used to fancy her so much back in the day, <laughs> Kelly LeBrock. Uh, yeah, no, she was gorgeous back then. I don't know who but, she you know, is. That, that was a fun film. It's really kind of farcical. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, it doesn't really have the dramatic moments, but there's a lot of great lines in it. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I need to watch it. I mean, it took me it's long. A lot, it's fun. It's, it's very silly, but it's good fun. Yeah, which sometimes but you need. It, yeah. And he's very good at doing that, isn't he? Like, Ferris Bueller is very silly, and that one is too. Sixteen Candles is very silly, too. It's kind of... Yeah. Um, whereas The Breakfast Club is kind of more drama-y. Um, yeah. That's quite sort of... Uh, not heavy, but you know what I mean? It's, it gives yeah. you more to think about. Whereas Bu- uh, Bueller, Ferris Bueller and uh, Red Science is, and Sixteen Candles is more just fun. You know, just pure fun. Yeah, and this one, you know, this one gets very farcical because I guess it's got the sci-fi element too. Yeah. Uh, and also it's got an early role in it for Robert Downey Jr. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Who so does he, he play? He plays a bully in it. There's these two bullies that are constantly kind of winding these two kids up. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you who else is in it who's really good. You know Bill Paxton? Yeah. Is he really in it? Yeah. Yeah, he plays the older brother of one of them, and he's always kind of bullying them. But he's hilarious in it. Is he really? His character, yeah. He had them. Um... So, Sorry. Yeah, his character in it is really funny because he just plays it so brilliantly as he normally does. Yeah, it is really funny watching those kind of eighties films because you realise there's a lot of cameos or tiny roles from like later yeah. on became really famous actors, aren't they? Like, um, yeah, I've got to say in. Um, 16 Candles, um, Anthony Michael Hall, you know, who's that really cringy uh, sort of the younger boy who's desperate to get her attention and fancies her, but she thinks he's a pain. And yeah. he's just this young boy. He won't leave her alone, and she's just really embarrassed. One of his nerdy friends is John Cusack. Yeah, John Cusack. Yeah, that was another one. That was another one. And you think at the time, like, yeah. you wouldn't realise that, like, oh, my God, it's and he looks exactly the same, really. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that guy went on to play um the 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 police cop or the detective in Con Air. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and was in a few other great films. So like yeah, it's really funny seeing them. Um but I don't know, is there any other cameos you can think of or like later on became famous? You mentioned Robert Downey Jr. Ooh, yeah. and Bill Paxton. Uh, yeah, so Robert Downey Jr., Bill Paxton in Weird Science. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any of There probably are quite a few others, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I guess even Kevin Bacon wasn't too well known before Planes, Trains, was he? So that's almost like a, you know, a cameo. Yeah, he was. Appearance. Yeah, because did she's having a baby come afterwards or before that? That was the, yeah, that was the year after. Yeah. So I think. He probably he must he might have done Footloose by then though, so he was probably well known for Footloose. Yeah, but he was still. I mean, still, he was about still 20, very early on in his career. He was about twenty four, wasn't he, when he did Footloose? Yeah. Um, that's another eighties film we have to talk about another time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's very laughs> it's John so Hughes-esque. tacky watching now. Like yeah. you know, can you imagine going somewhere to a small town where they ban dancing and it's like. So- <laughs> It's like the teenagers are like, yeah, we want to dance. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I remember him saying that um, John Hughes promised him a, 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 a part, a big part in one of his films. Um, yeah. And uh, he couldn't give it to him when he made um, Planes, Trains and Automobiles because he offered it to Steve Martin. But he said there was this little role and then he said, I'll keep you in mind for my next film, which was She's Having a Baby. So then he had more of the protagonist main role in that. Yeah. And uh, in that film, She's Having a Baby, I mean, I can't remember it because it was like I was a teenager when I watched it last time. There's a very young Alec Baldwin as well as his best friend. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. And his wife is Rose McGovern who ended up being in Downton Abbey, I think. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, it is It is really funny, especially when you see their hairstyles and everything. That's the most cringy. Yeah. And their their outfits, like, that's just so 80s. Um, but, 
But is there anything you want to say about any of that? There's one question I want to ask you. If you have. Yeah, okay. No, should I take it away? So if you had to go to um, a John Hughes 80s or a John Hughes-themed fancy dress, who would you go at? Oh, well, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, I think I would go as, right off the top of my head, I just think Joe Pesci. Oh, really? I would have thought, I was going to say in your, I was saying in my head, Ducky. Ducky, say ducky, say ducky. Oh, ducky. <laughs> that might be a bit outlandish for me now. Do you reckon? So I'd say, yeah. <laughs> I think maybe because, do you remember one of the stories about Joe Pesci on Home Alone? Uh, I've heard so one of them. I, I, I didn't say it, but you yeah. say you might say it. Okay, so because he was quite notorious for swearing. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the one I was going to talk yeah, about. Yeah. Okay, go for it, go for yeah, it. So he kept... He kept sort of breaking up the, the shoot because he kept swearing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he had to he had to sort of kind of develop this kind of renaissance. You know, he's under his breath, a bit like a Looney Tunes character. Yeah, yeah. Called, that's why his character's always going, "Oh, you son of a Yeah. Kind of like that, <laughs> he's trying to suppress all his swearing. Yeah, because he's kind of muttering to himself, isn't he? He's like, "Ah, so yeah. <laughs> I, I oughta. And he's a, and he's notorious for like he said for swearing and saying the f word a lot. And he's like, you can't say that; it's a family film. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as a kid, you think actually that's really funny because you never sort of yeah. thought about that. And actually, there are people that do that, you know, when they're just kind of like trying to suppress it, kind of, <laughs> kind of grumbling yeah. away in the corner. Yeah. So, yeah. and and that's another good point I was going to be come on to. Did he do? Um, Goodfellas. He did, yeah. After so them, that, or was a, that was the same year. Ah. So you've got you've got him in Goodfellas, and you got him in Home Alone the same year. That's quite a double bill. So, what was he filming them at the same time? Someone say, or was he doing one um, before the, the other? He probably finished Goodfellas first, because I know Home Alone was quite famous for being a very tight schedule. I think in the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember had a lot of problems, yeah. And I remember the inside. I can't remember. There was a thing on Netflix where they talk about the films that made us, and Home Alone was one of them. Yeah. And it said, I think it said the same thing as you. And the set, something happened to the set, and they ended up filming the set. And they made a set inside a gym, a school gym, or something. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So I think you know, it wasn't actually that big a budget film either. So no. They were struggling to get things done and they had to shoot it really quickly. Um, so, yeah, I can imagine that maybe Pesci came in straight from doing Goodfellas. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine, no, you can understand yeah. why he'd be used to swearing a lot, especially from yeah. from that film. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if I go to a John Hughes party dressed as Joe Pesci, do you want to be Daniel Stern? Um, no. Or are you going to go as a different character? I, I would, so it would be, I... It would be your character. I think, even though I didn't like the way she dressed, maybe, oh, uh, Pretty in Pink, the hat. Yeah, I, I can, I can see I can't that, remember yeah. what her name is in Pretty Pink, Molly Ringwood's name in that. Or, yeah, probably that one. It seems like the easiest option, and I don't know why I've got to think for hats. So I reckon I'd go for that one, maybe. Yeah, it, I it can definitely change. see you putting that off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the way she did her dance in The Breakfast Club. That was very MTV 80s. Yeah. Well, actually, I do remember, actually, um, I used to have one of those. So one of my ex-girlfriends, every time I used to put, like, a beanie hat on, she used to say, hello, Mr. Berg, from home alone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I've kind of already done it before, accidentally. Uh, I was going to say, you know the, the dad that was in Home Alone? He was in yeah. um, oh, Big, wasn't he? Yeah, was, one of the, uh, the, 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 the wives, wasn't he? He was one of the executives. Sort of become, yeah, one of the executives that fancies the woman. Yeah, 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 the kind of boyfriend that he knocks out, really. Well, he sort of yeah. 
<laughs> basically kicks out of the way with, um, without realising. Yeah. So, but I haven't seen him in anything else really, other than he was probably like another eighties type one. Yeah, a little bit. I think he just did. He went on and did a lot of TV. Um, appeared in a few other films. Yeah. Yeah. But, so. I don't remember too many other things that he did. Would you Obviously, know? the mum's been in a lot more, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin's mum, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she... I think he's great. She's always great. Yeah, you she know, was in Beetlejuice, wasn't she? Yeah. When she does that funny dance. Yeah, she's done a few things with... Um, Modern family. So one of the people behind Spinal Tap. Oh, was um, she? Yeah, so... One of the creators of that has done a lot of those similar kind of things, mockumentaries. Okay. And uh, she's been in a lot of those as well, and she's been in a lot of uh, sitcoms. Yeah, she was in Modern Family yeah. at one point. I saw her, and yeah, that, that was yeah. really good as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, is there anything you want to say about any of his films that we haven't spoken about or about him? Um. Did he have any involvement in any of the projects that went on that he might not have been not so well known as? I know he had something to do with a Baby's Day Out. Baby's Day Out, yeah. So he wrote that. So that, I quite enjoyed that one. I never saw I that say. one. <laughs> it's, it's basically Home Alone, but with a baby. So it's this baby, it's like a, a little bit like a Looney Tunes cartoon. So, okay. Yeah. This baby gets kidnapped, but then the baby escapes the kidnappers, and they have to go and chase the baby around New York. I've got an interesting. So includes- Sorry. Yeah, so there's sequences of him on like a construction tower. I've seen that. Things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I got I an interesting fact about that as well. Um, okay, what's that? So you know, one of the stunt men, stunt stunt man for the baby. Yeah. Uh, do you know who that was? Oh, was it Vern Troyer? Yeah. Yeah, I remember, yeah, Mini-Me. Mini-Me, yeah, from what the Austin gig. Powers. Yeah. I, think, I think that was one of his first gigs. Yeah. Okay, obviously, that's quite interesting. It is, but obviously they needed someone to do, not the dangerous parts, but I guess some parts for the baby that the baby yeah. couldn't actually do. And, the, and that seemed like the most <laughs> logical <Okay>. thing to <laughs> get a... a, a a dwarf, and is it a dwarf? I can't. don't know the uh, political word is. There's two. There's. Or well, yeah, little person. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. be yeah. careful. Um, with how. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's your daughter. He, yeah, he was very. Uh, he was quite well known for being, you know, very small. Yeah. So he had the kind of advantage to being able to do those kind of those roles, really. Hmm. So. Yeah, so that was one good thing about him. Oh, and I think John Hughes has something to do with Curly Sue. Yeah, that was, I think, one of his last ones he directed, wasn't it? I think he did that. Yeah, I wasn't so fond uh, of that film. Did you like no, it? No, I think that, no, not particularly. I think, you know, in the 90s, you know, he, he struggled a bit to keep up the momentum and then uh, he sort of moved more into producing. Uh, okay. But even then, a lot of his films weren't quite as good. Yeah. Yeah, it was more for the sort of a le- like late eighties, nineties. Yeah, so it was 90s. definitely more of a product of the eighties, really. Definitely, where that, everything worked, you know, well for him. Yeah. But, all right. Was there anything else you want to say about him or his work, or any points uh, that you haven't thought of? No, I think I think we've covered John Two. Hughes quite well today. <laughs> no, it's been it's been fun. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, how do you, how do you think your uh, your intern did today? Work experience. Oh, he did a good job. He needs to be a bit more on the ball at the beginning of introducing. <laughs> 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 but I think he did really well. Yeah. And if ever I come down with a serious bug or something, or I have internet problems, then I'll you can be my guest host and my stand in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, your stunt double. Yeah, or what I could do is, if there's a premiere, you could be like the poor guy that goes out and does the interviews in the so in the rain. <laughs> oh yeah, well, thank you. Very much. <laughs> you know, like one of those journalists are like, yeah. I don't want to be here. They've sent me here. <laughs> rain swept territory somewhere. 
I have to try and talk to one of the celebrities. Nobody will want to talk to me because there's so many other journalists. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so well, we can do. You can do, be a guest host at some point if you want. Just yeah, don't okay, take over yeah, my show. <laughs> I won't take over. I won't dream of it. You do too good a job. Think, no, so. you can be like what we could I'll do is maybe you. you could be like um, do like your own version of like maybe music or something. You can be like the twin brother show if you know what I mean. I could give that a go. Yeah, well, I think, <laughs> you know, I prefer I prefer being on the other side of it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It is I mean, interesting. You're a good host, so I enjoy it. No, it is interesting, isn't it? Being on the flip yeah. side of it. It is, yeah. I don't think I'm very good at being the guest. Um, it is very, it is a very interesting dynamic. So, but um, yeah. So next time it'd be good practice if you completely take over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll start getting big headed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, is there anything else you want to say, Tom, before we wrap it up? Uh, no, I think yeah. No, I had a lot of fun today. You know, I just love John Hughes's work. So he's just one of those, you know, it's, he's always does feel good films. So it's easy to just, you know, put something on when you're feeling a bit down or you just want to be cheered up. Yeah. I have to watch one of his films today, I think, especially when I'm not well. That will help. Yeah, so. well, that'll, that'll do the trick, I think. <laughs> it actually does. Maybe Ferris Bueller. That sounds like yeah. the best one to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's another good thing I can quickly say about that film. Um, yeah. Because we had, I told you about there was that conspiracy fe um, theory about um, Kevin later on becoming the Jigsaw killer in the Saw movies. Yeah. Is that Cameron is a bit like, you know, the film Fight Club? Yeah. So there's that theory that, that he's oh, yeah. actually like, is it the alter ego? Oh, no, no, no. He's the real person. Yeah, and, and Ferris Bueller is Brad Pitt. Yeah. So he's yeah. the guy he, he really wants to be. So that's another thing I've, I remember picking up on. Did you hear about that? I think I, I, I have heard that one, yeah. Yeah, so the I real think, guy is yeah. Cameron, and Ferris is the person he really wants to be. He's kind of like the Brad Pitt character. He's everything he ever wanted to be. Yeah. Which I is think I'd one. rather be Brad Pitt than Matthew Broderick. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But anyway, so is there okay. anything else? Do you have any like of those conspiracy theories that you know from any other films? No, no. I mean, I I definitely buy into the the Kevin McAllister one. Not so much the Cameron one. No. Yeah. Yeah, the Kevin McAllister one. That's a really interesting one. Yeah, he's a bit messed up. I think that there's something in that. It would kind of make sense that, you know, his parents often left him by himself and he probably yeah. was quite traumatised as a child. And he, yeah, he's probably got a complex of being you know, blamed for everything all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had enough, started to go out and yeah. make all these evil traps and kill people. And he never got to go on any sort of holiday, did he? He was um, always left behind every every family holiday. Yeah. He never could do anything. He was always by himself. <laughs> he went to New York. <laughs> yeah. But then it was all by himself again. Yeah. <laughs> the pigeon lady. And what did you think of the uncle in that film? Oh, he, the one that shouts at him. Me, and... Yeah, he makes me laugh so much because he's, uh, he's just the worst sort of family member you could possibly imagine. <laughs> He's like, get out of the shower! You little jerk! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. Oh, and there was a good question I was going to ask about that. Is that, um, you know when he's watching those gangster films that he shouldn't be watching? Yeah. So in the first one, there's the scene where there's the guy who goes, and don't come back, you filthy animal, after shooting some guy. And he uses yeah. that extract to scare the burglars away, doesn't he, to think that there's people in the house and he sets off the fireworks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that the uncle? No, there's... Uh, I can't, I've seen that the I, actor who plays the gangster in something else. But, okay, so I always thought that was um, the uncle for some no, reason. No, it was another, 
it was another actor. I can't even uh, remember. Ah, and in the yeah. second one, I always thought that when he saw the gangster film in the second one, and it was a female that gets killed, I always thought that was his mum. Just playing different no, role. So, no. no? It was the same gangster again, yeah, but it was um, <laughs> no, just meant to be like a separate old gangster videotape that he had. <laughs> so, hang on, before we go, so do your quick your quick impression of the uncle and then I was going to say you've got to do your impression of Glenn when you put on the aftershave and then we'll finish there that would be a good way to finish up the show yeah okay okay so do the uncle in the shower in the first one when he walks in him in the shower so I'll do when he's been uh, when Kevin just made a big mess of all the pizza oh okay uh, okay well it was it was the brother's fault but yeah okay the uncle says uh, look what you did you little jerk <laughs> What does he shout at him when he's in the shower? And uh, Kevin walks in and says, like, You get out of here! little pervert. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And then, before we go, to finish off with, you've got to do the Kevin impression when he puts the aftershave on. on his... Yeah. Go on, Ed. Okay. So you've got to put stuff in my face now. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Is that ah. it? Oh, he, he just goes, ah! <laughs> yeah. We tried to get my nephew to do it. Didn't work. <laughs> no, not buying it. <laughs> but anyway. All right, well, thank you, Tom. And you're a very yeah, good host. You. I'll give you a, yeah, a, a 9 out of 10. Oh, thank you very much. I'm not going to quit my day job. Okay. Okay. <laughs> try it one more time all right we'll sort that out but yeah thank you for being a great guest that's all right and i'm sorry about my cold and you've got a cold too so i hope you get better soon yeah all right we'll take care John can use as well. yeah we'll definitely do that yeah all right okay take care bye, -bye. bye.